Now in third and the final section, we will talk about the uh, disposition of the patient, admission and discharge of the patient, and also the pearls, pitfalls, and myths. So disposition with consultation, then we do serial evaluation of the patient. So it's important we should do the consultation, serial evaluation of the patient, admission and discharge. Factors must be considered. In disposition, we have psychosocial factors in the admission and the discharge. They are very important. If person, uh, we need to uh, discharge the patient, we should discharge the patient at the right time, on the time, because they have different psychosocial issues also biological conditions, medical legal conditions, and also financial conditions, which are very important in the expensive medical uh, situations these days. So these are all the factors that needs to be considered, psychosocial factors, biological factors, medical legal factors, and also the financial factors. Discharge instructions, when discharging the patient, it's very important that we should give them the instructions they need to follow. If they won't follow the instructions properly, then all the treatment sometimes goes to the waste. So we should go for the detailed, comprehensive discharge instructions. Uh, what to do? what not to do. So it's very important, depending on what type of treatment they got, you should inform them what they need to do, especially after the surgical procedures when we are discharging the patient, we should tell them clearly how they should clean the wound, what are special in, uh, 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 steps they need to do after the surgery. So what not to do, uh, when and where to follow up. That's also very important. They need to come after one week. Tell them very precisely that they need to visit again in one week. That's very important for them. Reasons to return to the emergency department. Pearls, pitfalls, and the myths. Always address life threats first, including patient and staff safety. It's important, life threats first, patients and staff safety is also important. Make sure don't risk the safety of the patient and the staff. An exact diagnosis is not all, always possible, not always necessary. In emergency, as I, we went over this in detail in the previous two sections, the diagnosis is sometimes not uh, possible accurate diagnosis because we don't have much time to diagnose uh, completely. So we go for the uh, like um, uh, probable diagnosis, provisional diagnosis. The term used for this diagnosis is provisional diagnosis is what can be uh, present or what can be the condition that is causing these problems. And we go for the treatment. We don't need the exact treatment in most cases an appropriate disposition acceptable. Not all is what it seems in emergency medicine. So what you see is not usually what is present, so it's not always the situation in emergency medicine. Expect the unexpected. Consider alternative diagnosis always. We should go for alternative diagnosis and our treatment in emergency should 
cover pretty much all the differential diagnosis that can be present if we don't have the time for going uh, to go for exact diagnosis we should cover the treatment which should cover the all the uh, differential diagnosis so consider alternate diagnosis also possibility of lab error or false negative or false positive is always there repeat tests be wary about the wrong tests attempt to get appropriate service or consultant involved when necessary it's very important if we need any other appropriate service if we need any a uh, psychologist at that moment if there is any uh, con condition like any uh, pregnancy loss or the if there is any stillbirth in cases of emergency visits of the obstetric patient sometimes they are in the condition that we need to call any uh, clinical psychologist to uh, calm them down we need to bring all these services or consultant if there is situation involved people with psychiatric illness may have medical illnesses too so if there is a, if some patient who have psychiatric history visit and they are uh, uh, maybe at that moment not in the condition of properly giving the history and the attendant who is coming with them usually they know this problem has kids so patient has schizophrenia or the depression or bipolar disorder whatever is the condition don't just go over that thing because they might have some other medical illness associated with the psychiatric condition that is the reason may be for emergency visit at that moment or not just the psychiatric illness and this holds true for intoxicated patients another many elderly patients have uncommon presentations for common conditions so they have uncommon presentation for the common conditions like acs or sepsis uh, polypharmacy and drug drug interactions elder abuse neglect depression and suicidal gestures or attempts all these things are common in elderly patient and the important thing is they might have they they usually don't have very uh, specific symptoms or presentations as with for the other uh, people so elderly usually present differently because they have also sometimes uh, taking multiple drugs they can have drug drug interactions that is causing the problem or uh, there might be any abuse neglect depression and uh, suicidal gestures or attempts consider the safety of an elderly patient being discharged it's also very important while discharging the elderly patient we should go for their safety look for their safety whether they have somebody attending them taking care of them at home whether they have ability or have access to the medicine access to the hospital when they need so consider all these things when we discharge an elderly patient or if they have a history of any abuse also Uh, never rush a patient out of emergency department with a condition that may recur so uh, don't just look to the patient or decide okay this patient don't need to be in the emergency department 
take time especially in conditions who have they that they may reoccur uh, don't rush the patient give them the time to observe very carefully because it might happen if you rush them out of emergency department oh this pain is just you know uh, not very serious they might have a heart problem or heart attack once they go out of the emergency department. so it's good to once they visited the uh, emergency department we should have a detailed examination and take this opportunity to evaluate the patient review nursing and uh, emergency ser uh, services notes look for clues that patient may not offer or tell you use caution in patient with language or cultural barriers if they need the translator give them the translator so you should be able to understand them properly so they should not be missing any points think about abuse or neglect in every case document appropriate finding in record clearly if you think there might be any abuse or neglect involved especially in elderly and pediatric patients abuse and neglect should not be overlooked consider dangerous outcome or the worst case scenario enjoy the privilege of providing emergency care to all patient that conclude our topic of introduction to emergency medicine thank you for watching scardia.com